In this video I'm going to run through the tutorial from the help file called Scripting Windows for Beginners. I'd advise anyone new to Macro Scheduler to read through that tutorial and run through the example for themselves. While the example is rather contrived, it does teach us some important concepts which we'll use in almost every automation macro you'll ever write. What we want to do is create a macro that will open Notepad, type some text, save the document and then close Notepad again. Before automating any process, it is helpful if we're already familiar with it. When we use a computer, we tend to do things automatically and subliminally without thinking about it. So run through the process manually, making note of the windows that appear, the keystrokes we press and things we need to wait for. After starting Notepad, which I've done here, we can see that the window title is Untitled Notepad. We'll make a note of that. I can also see that the main editor area is already focused. The carrier is blinking away. So we don't need to do anything to focus the editor before we can type. We can just start typing. So we'll type some text. I find it helps to break the process down into chunks and not try to automate the whole thing in one go. So let's start by writing some code to open Notepad and enter the text before we go any further. I started with Notepad already open. We want the macro to start Notepad for us. Now most people would probably click Start, Accessories, Notepad or Start, Run and then type Notepad to do that. While we could write a macro to do either of those things, it seems a bit daft when we can do it with one line. Notepad's executable is notepad.exe and it lives in the System32 folder so it's already in the path. So all we need to, to do is run notepad.exe. If you were automating an app and you didn't know what its path or executable name was, try right clicking on the app's shortcut and select properties. You'll see the path to the app's executable in the target box. You can then just copy that to the run command. So anyway, this first line runs Notepad. Remember, we need to make the script wait until Notepad is open before we can send keystrokes to it. The script runs a lot faster than a human can type, and Notepad takes a little while to get ready. So it's no use sending keystrokes the moment we've started launching it. In computer time, it'll all happen too soon, and those keystrokes won't get there. So we use the window title that we made a note of and tell the script to wait, script to wait for that Notepad window to appear using the wait window open command. And if you remember, we made a note of the fact that the window title was that. If we wanted to, we could have the script insert that for us. Go down to Window Functions, find Wait Window Open, and we should actually see that in the list. There it is. Insert it for us. Oh, that's an easier way of doing it. So now we can send some text, and we just use the uh, send command to send the keystrokes. So, let's see how far we get with that script now. So let's make sure we close Notepad first, we won't save it, and we'll run this script and watch it happen. And there we are. So now the next thing we want to do is save the file. So what keystrokes do we need to do that? I prefer to use keystrokes than mouse clicks because keystrokes are not sensitive to window placement or cursor position. What MacroScheduler has relative mouse functions and image recognition for finding object positions, if we can use a simple keystroke, we might as well do so. In Windows, the Alt key can be used to trigger an object shortcut key. When we press the Alt key, we see some letters underlined on the window. Those letters are the shortcut key. Alt also invokes the main menu. We can see that F is the file menu shortcut. So Alt plus F will select the file menu. We can also see, if we go in there, that a of save as is underlined down here. So Alt plus F plus A should invoke the save as dialog. Alt F A and up pops the save as dialog. And that's shorter so you can see it. S save as. 
We should wait for that dialog to appear before we do anything else, just as we did for the main notepad window. So let's add that little bit to our script. Press Alt. So send F and A, release Alt, and then wait window open, save as. Now you'll notice that I've used lowercase letters there. I always use lowercase letters if sending keyboard shortcuts as opposed to text, um, because uppercase may be construed as having the shift key pressed at the same time. And we're not actually sending text to the window, we're actually wanting to send those particular letters. So I always lose lowercase for that, it seems to be more reliable. Now let's have a look back at that save as box. Notice that the file name box has the keyboard focus, so we could go right ahead and enter a file name. I've noticed that some people seem to think that if they want to select a different folder to the one that's already highlighted, that already selected, they must make the macro double click on a drive letter and double click through a series of folders and make the macro do things like this. It just doesn't it just isn't necessary and it obviously just makes the script more complicated. All you actually need to do is type the full path to the file in there. So if you want to save into documents and settings, we could literally just try type C documents and settings and just give it a name. Of course I haven't got permission to do that there, so I'll choose somewhere else. <laughs> I'm running Vista. Press save. And it's saved. Of course, the save as box disappears. Now, let me just go back in there to show you something. Note also, as well as that file name box being highlighted, that the save button has a kind of a blue border around it. It's actually the default button. So just pressing enter will invoke that button. So after sending the, te the, the file name to the box, all we actually need to do is press enter. We don't need to use a key, a mouse click. Um, we could use Alt S because S is the underlying character, but actually just pressing enter is enough. So let's go to, back to our script. And what we need to do is send my file name and press enter. But what I'm going to do is create a variable for my file name and also I'm going to see, I'm going to make the script at the beginning, I'm going to say if that file exists let's delete it. That would avoid any situation where if the file already exists, the script is going to give me a warning um, when we try to save it. Now, we could rate the macro, detect that warning and respond to it if we wanted to. But in this case, um, I think it's better that we can actually prevent that from happening in the first place. Um, whenever you're writing a script that's doing something like creating a file, then to my mind it makes sense to actually make sure that file name isn't there and that file isn't already there and that means that you, you, you can, you've got more predictable sequence of events when later on. So let's run the script. Let's close notepad. So this should run without any warnings. It should and then wait for the save as box. Of course it went wrong. So what did I do wrong there? Probably need a small wait. The save as box obviously appeared but wasn't quite ready. Let's try that. Okay, so that's worked. This, this shows that that shows the importance of building it up slowly and testing it bit by bit. What we found is we needed a small wait there. Sometimes a window will appear, will actually exist but won't necessarily be completely ready because there's still some painting going on on, on the window. So a wait window open isn't enough on its own. It also, but it also demonstrates how if we didn't have that wait window open, we'd have that that 
that file name wouldn't have appeared anywhere near it. Um, as it has, as it happens, we want a wait window open and then a small delay just to make things a little bit um, more reliable. And we might not need a full full second; half a second might do. You could be clever if you wanted to and use something like wait screen text or or wait screen image to actually wait for a part of that window to appear, and that would avoid having um, a static static second delay. But but quite often. Just a short half a second is, an, is is all it needs. So finally, let's add some code to close Notepad. We could use. Let's have a look. Let's run Notepad again. Now we could use Alt F and then X, but also we could just use Control F4. Sorry, Alt F4, which is a standard Windows shortcut for closing a window. So let's do that. Press Alt, press F4, release Alt. Of course, what I've forgotten is we should wait for that Save As box to, to disappear first. So for that, we'll use Wait Window Closed. So if we look through the script, the script creates the file name variable. If that file exists, it deletes it, then runs Notepad, waits for the Notepad window to appear, sends some lines of text, presses Alt F A to get to, to do file save as, waits for the save as window to appear, sends a file name and presses enter, then waits for that save as box to disappear and then presses Alt F4 to close notepad. Let's run it. There you go. Done. So it's a rather contrived, a rather simple example, but it does demonstrate some important concepts that we use in almost every interface automation script you'll write, and hopefully watching me go through the motions is helpful. Make sure you run through the tutorial and the help file yourself. It does a few other things and shows some other ways to send the lines of text, so you should find it useful. And um, finally, check out articles and resources on our website. If you go to support, blog, and specifically, especially this link, Articles and Tutorials, has a little summary of some recent and popular articles which are really helpful if you're getting started writing a script or if you want to make your scripts more reliable. Um, some, some useful um, tips, some common um, issues to consider. Um, and finally, don't, skip, don't forget the forums. Um, or contact us if you need a hand. That's it. Happy scripting.